Hi, everyone, and welcome to another live stream with Yakir Gola. Yakir, I'm so glad that you could join me, co-CEO, co-founder of GoPuff. And thanks for being on. This is my first one since coming back from Matt Leave. Thank you, Deirdre. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be on today with you. Yeah, and you've been doing a lot of traveling. You were just telling me how you were in California. You're in New York today. What have you been up to? Yeah, no, uh, GoPuff is expanding rapidly across the country and also into Europe. So definitely been on the road uh, and very excited about all the progress that the team is making about bringing GoPuff uh, everywhere and bringing GoPuff globally. So I just came back from a trip in California, visiting a lot of our BevMo sites in LA. You know, we, we actually uh, just reached about 50% coverage in California uh, of, of, of about 15 to 20 minute delivery capability. So you know, the BevMo acquisition that we made uh, was a really exciting one, and the team has made a lot of progress on the execution side. Uh, and now I'm excited to be in New York. Uh, it's a big day today. Yeah. Uh, we're officially live in, in New York City and very excited about bringing uh, the service to, to everyone in New York today. Have you re received some orders this morning? Yeah. No, I, I've, I've uh, visited actually a few uh, micro fulfillment centers this morning. Uh, it's been super busy. Uh, a lot of orders getting? coming in. What are people uh, everything. Uh, everything, you know, things from snacks, ice cream, a lot of grocery products, uh, over the counter medication. I saw someone order, uh, it's getting cold out over here. Um, so I mean, really a wide range of products uh, people are buying. I, I've always found it fascinating how you guys started sort of not, not on the coast. We tend to talk a lot about these tech companies in California or in New York, and you guys did not start either of those places. And you sort of went to the coast a little bit later. You started with mid-sized cities. What's behind that strategy? Yeah, look, to take a step back, you know, the way Raph and I built this business was in a really scrappy way focused on fiscal responsibility. You know, we launched the business in college eight years ago. Uh, we were the first delivery drivers. I've done thousands of deliveries myself alongside Roth. Uh, we were the first, you know, operation associates in the facilities. We really built a business from the ground up and really figured out the unit economics and the profitability of the model before scaling it. So that's what we did. We launched it in Philadelphia. Uh, we did focus on the college demographic early on. Uh, for the first three years, we expanded off of profitability. Uh, then the business, you know, just took off. Now, you know, the, the assortment went from 100 products eight years ago to now 4,000. You know, we're now selling things like baby products, pet food, grocery, you know, ice cream, alcohol, wide range. So we're excited about how we started, obviously, in a very untraditional way. Uh, but, it, you know, we continue to innovate. The model's kind of different as well. I know that often you guys get compared to DoorDash and Uber and what they're trying to do in the convenience space, but you guys are actually more of like a micro fulfillment company, right? You started from a different place by actually having your own sort of mini warehouses and delivering. How has that model proved more effective? And you also see kind of DoorDash going into the space with Dash Marts. It's no longer sort of this three-sided marketplace. Yeah, I think, you know, what GoPuff has been able to demonstrate is that the vertically integrated model is the more sustainable model over the long term, both from the customer perspective and from a profitability perspective. So if you talk about the customer perspective, because we take in all the inventory, we're able to actually have a seamless customer experience. You know, what you order on GoPuff is what you get. We're also able to deliver a wide range of products in one delivery within 20 to 30 minutes. The delivery fee is two bucks. It's very seamless for the customer. And on the profitability side, you know, our margins come from product sales, right? And our ads business. We have a super high gross margin off the products. Uh, so there's no middleman. You know, you're dealing directly with right. GoPub. So I think what people are noticing is that this is the, the right model over the long term. And we're seeing, you know, people try to come into the space. But what I can tell you is we've been building this business you know, our infrastructure of 500 micro fulfillment centers. Uh, this has been eight years in the making, you know, hundreds of engineers building all of our technology in house uh, to really fulfill, you know, instant needs for customers. We, we're one of the largest liquor license holders in the country. That's sort of a non obvious one, but even with the acquisition of BevMo, uh, we've developed probably a four year head start uh, from a liquor license perspective. And, you know, if you actually look at market share in the US for instant needs category, uh, which is basically all the vertically integrated companies, GoPub has a near 80% share in the US and, and we're just getting started. Who, wh what source are you pointing to when you say 80% market share? 
Yeah. So if because, you look because at, there, I know that, and you know, yeah. there's there's other there's Edison data that points to you guys being overtaken by yeah. DoorDash. I know that that's not entirely accurate because it doesn't take into yeah. account, right? But I, I've been looking for a metric to sort sure. of explain what you guys are sort of doing in that in the field. Yeah. Uh, so Yipid actually just bought Edison, and they're the ones that that are publishing the report. Um, you know, okay. where it shows it takes basically all vertically integrated platforms. And, and it's, it includes all sales of convenience, grocery, and alcohol. And then it, it takes into account everyone in the space. And that amounts to GoPuff has a near 80% share. So that's, that's the right way to look at this business, you know, because that's an apples to apples comparison, not sort of, uh, you know, third party marketplaces. As you know, you know, much worse customer experience because the delivery takes much longer. You, you have to go to multiple different stores or restaurants to pick up the goods. It's not great for the customer. So we look at sort of vertically integrated platforms and, you know, that, that's Which the market is, share. Yeah, yeah a, key, a key distinction, too, when you talk about yeah. you guys versus the field. Um, you mentioned profitability a few times. I'm guessing you guys aren't profitable, but you also said unit economics. So do you think that, you know, when and if investors eventually see what that looks like, they'd be pleasantly surprised compared to some of the other vertical, as you call them, vertically integrated players in this field? Yeah, look, the benefit of operating this business for eight years is that you have, you know, a wide range of micro fulfillment centers and markets that have been in operating for, for quite some time. So if you look at comp markets, which are markets greater than 18 months in business, uh, they're all profitable. And so clearly there's a ramp up time, right? And we're making major investments right now in, in the growth of, for the long term of the business. But if you look at our comp markets and especially the ones that have been operating for years, uh, they're cash flow positive uh, mm -hmm. and producing income for the company. And we, we look at that as the, the main metric because they've been in business for, for longer and, and there's a ramp up time for these markets. But once you get to, you know, even a certain amount of scale, uh, th this model proves to be very strong from a unit economics and profitability perspective. To be clear, though, GoPuff not profitable on a net income or adjusted EBITDA basis. Is that correct? Yeah. Again, like if, if you take into account, um, you know, the the investments that we're making in the business, you know, from a full company perspective, no. However, you know, if you take out all in new investments in growth and, and in technology, yes, uh, the business is, is profitable from that perspective. And if we wanted to, like I said, for the first three years, we were cash flow positive, right? Okay. And I think yeah. that's the unique thing about how we built the business is we focused on getting the unit economics and the profitability right. But we're going to continue to reinvest in, in the future. If we're seeing really strong return on investment capital and we're seeing major growth in the business, which we've seen triple digit growth before the pandemic, even post pandemic, if you look at credit card data, we're the fastest delivery service uh, globally right now from a year over year. Post pandemic, you're seeing triple digit growth? Yeah, triple digit. Yeah, yeah, post pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me so, ask you then with unit yeah. economics looking good, and there's been you know, a lot of MA activity, you guys have been included in that. Um, but has anyone, and you know, I'm thinking too recently about the reports about Instacart and DoorDash, has anyone approached you guys, any of the big players? Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Look, Roth and I are extremely ambitious and we want to build this business over the long term and really build a global platform for instant needs. If you just take a step back and you look at, you know, what's the total addressable market of instant needs, right? You're talking about five plus trillion. So we're just excited about changing the way people shop. And that's what we're focused on. We're building a long term sustainable business. And that's what gets us up, you know, in the morning, super excited about delivering for our customers and really building a, an unbelievable team. So yeah. we're just getting started in the growth and we're excited about building this over the long term. I know that, especially talking to both of you guys in the past that you guys are in it for the long term. And I look forward to covering an eventual IPO. But are you guys being approached? Look, we're not entertaining conversations right now. <laughs> I'll put it very bluntly to you. We're just focused on our customer. We're focused on winning. And like I talked about some of the market share data, you know, there's still so much opportunity, especially in, in you know, where we're going in terms of the velocity of, of GoPuff. We're opening about nearly 40 micro fulfillment centers a month. We're really excited about the Europe expansion. We acquired two players in Europe and we're going to be really expanding into every single country in Europe right now. And there's, there's major demand for GoPuff globally. So as I said, we're thinking long term, we're building this over the long term, we're not entertaining in any any conversations. And we're excited about building the business.
Yeah, here I always love these live streams because we have more time, but with <laughs> you guys, we never have enough time. So let me run through a few more sure. topics. Yeah, um, no, I want to sure. ask you what it sort of looks like, what growth is looking like right now, or even just the speed at which you guys are able to deliver. Um, I spoke with Instacart's CEO just yesterday. She talked about a new resting heart rate for the company. I know even myself, just anecdotally, trying to get my groceries delivered. It's taken longer and it's less reliable um, recently. And I wonder, especially that's, you know, a lot of that has to do with the labor shortage. How are you guys navigating that in terms of employees? I know you actually employ employees in your warehouses, but also deliveries and drivers. Yeah, look, to take a step back, you know, GoPuff is just a different model, right? We're a vertically integrated model. So the benefit of that is that we can actually batch and route orders a lot more effectively than other third party platforms. So not only do you get the, you know, profitability advantage, you also are able to do more deliveries per hour uh, for drivers because you're able to batch more efficiently because there's one pickup point for, for driver partners. Um, so th that's a real benefit for us. We also have about you know ten thousand employees, and then you know tens of thousands of of driver partners that are you know super happy on the platform. So because of the advantage of the model, we actually haven't seen a labor shortage in the market. You know, uh, impact the, the company you know whatsoever from a customer experience perspective. So you're not you're not feeling it. Not right now. You're not feeling you know, it as much as some of the others. You think? Yeah, exactly. That's right. Okay. Uh, lastly, and I know I've only got you for a few more minutes, I want to talk about this idea of a brick and mortar footprint. As we talked about, you guys have these micro fulfillment centers within cities, right? And you're testing out an omni-channel store right here in San Francisco. I'll have yeah. to see it uh, for myself. What is the goal here? Do you think that eventually we could see you open up more and more of your micro fulfillment centers to the public, sort of see them as these omni-channel brick and mortar warehouses slash stores? Yeah, look, to take a step back, you know, we acquired BevMo, right? Um, BevMo has 160 locations. The reason why we did that was for the liquor licenses and the advantage and head start for the California market, right? So the team has done a great job bringing GoPuff to life while leveraging the physical infrastructure. So mm -hmm. we think about, you know, the future world is it's going to be, you know, both micro fulfillment model and, and dark store model as well as sort of an omni-channel presence. But the, the real you know, purpose for GoPuff of, of acquiring you know, BevMo was for the liquor licenses, which again, accelerated our, our head start by a multitude of years in the market, uh, while we're able to benefit from the 4 million customers that BevMo have on their loyalty program and really coming into California in a big way. Now, you know, as I said, we now cover 50% of California. We're just getting started. You know, so we're we're super excited about that. But we think that the future is, you know, go puff everywhere. Right. Also gave you some interesting experience, though, with brick and mortar, that BevMo acquisition. Yeah, sure. Finally, yeah, here, I know, you know, we've seen this trend of delivery companies or logistics, you know, micro fulfillment companies pushing further into advertising. It's a model that I often talk about with Instacart and you guys have been doing the same thing. What's the opportunity there in terms of advertising? Yeah, look, you know, I think there's a massive opportunity from an advertising perspective. You know, we started to build our advertising platform we call GoPuff Marketing Solution a little bit early. You know, we built it probably just over three and a half years ago. And the, the benefit about our model is that we've already had direct relationships with CPGs, right? Because we benefit from buying direct from CPGs, we've had relationships with them. And they're seeing GoPuff as the future of e-commerce, right? And given the growth rate and now covering nearly 30 plus percent of the U.S. population by the end of the year, um, they're seeing us as, as a massive platform to get in front of the future customer. And so what we've been able to do is, you know, advertise through search, through product placement, uh, through hyper-targeted sampling. Within and we the become app? A, yeah, within the app, yeah. And we become a premier platform. And the, the most important thing that I, I will tell you, though, it's really important to drive return. On average, we've given advertisers a 3.2 uh, to 1 ROI on every dollar spent on the ad platform. So Because if you think about it, it's really... At the moment of purchase, you know, these uh, customers are consuming GoPuff within 20 to 30 minutes, right? So it's ability to influence the behavior and the future habits of, of the future customer. And so that's why I'm really excited about our advertising business. You know, I'm spending a lot of time with the team 
We have an amazing team that's building that out, and we're really excited about double downing on the ads business, which, by the way, is just kind of icing on the cake to already really strong uh, margin business. Um, so, you know, I think third party companies, you know, actually rely on the advertising business as really the only way to bring profit to the bottom line. You know, given our product margin is already superior, you know, I think the advertising business is just going to take the profitability of the company to the next level over the long right. term. And, and, you know, that's fascinating. I appreciate you giving me some actual figures there, too. And it's so interesting because that's honestly a similar answer that I got from Fiji Simo over at Instacart yesterday when I was talking about their advertising business. It's all about CPG and the next platforms that they are looking to. So I, I look forward to seeing how this all evolves and shakes out. Uh, finally, Yaker, before I let you go, um, when can I visit that brick and mortar store in San Francisco? We'd have to get together. You know, we're spending a lot of time in California. Um, we're converting, you know, a bunch of Bebmos. We're bringing GoPuff to life in a big we way. We have planned to be open, right? On Gary? Yeah, on Gary, yeah. We're, we're planning to, for that to be open, you know, immediately. So okay. we'd love to get together and give you a tour of, of the, uh, you know, Brick We'll do our in-person interview there. How about that? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, now in this post-COVID world, that would be great. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I'll hold you to it. Uh, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, and we will talk to you again very soon, but good luck with the New York City launch and let us know how it goes. Let us know some of those orders and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Amazing. Thank you, Deirdre. I appreciate it.